Hello there and welcome back to my channel. My name is Formula Hun. I've been an avid F1 fan since I was a little girl. I'm also a Twitch streamer. You can catch me live Monday, Wednesdays and Saturdays. Link is in the description below. Today we're going to talk about five drivers that must do better this season. And the reason why is because we've got quite a few drivers that we expect to do really well but just aren't where we would have expected them to be last year. You could call it on their last legs. Too far? Too harsh? Before we go any further, I would like to thank our sponsor, Owned. Owned is a fantastic website to get all your overlays, your emotes, everything you can imagine that you could possibly need to be a streamer, either on Twitch or YouTube. In fact, if you are one of my Twitch subs, you will see the little wheels that we have as our sub badge emotes. Those are from Owned and I love them. So for all your streamer needs, go over to Owned. The link is in the description. They do have a sale on currently and they're really, really great value. So do go and give them guys a quick look. On to the video. First up is Valtteri Bottas. I think Valtteri is on everyone's list of kind of needs to do better. It's not that he isn't any good, I mean qualifying he's pretty handy and he has helped Mercedes to their championship wins, but when it comes to race pace, it's like he's in a different car. He was 124 points down from Lewis last year and bear in mind that Lewis missed a race because of Covid. That's a huge gap, it's just far too much for a guy driving a Mercedes. The craziest thing is, is that Lewis scored enough points for him to take the Constructors' Championship with Mercedes without Bottas. If Bottas wants to become world champion, he has seriously got to give Lewis a run for his money. That's a tall order for any driver to do. Lewis is one of the best drivers we've ever had in Formula 1 and it is difficult to run at the pace that he does but he's technically in his last year for mercedes and if he wants to keep that drive he has got to pull something out of the bag this year number two in the must do better sebastian vettel before you come for me he hasn't had the strongest of years especially in 2020 now i know Ferrari broke his dreams, tore him apart. He lost his hair over it. I know, I know. You have to be honest that before last year, Vettel made some mistakes and was overshone by Charles quite consistently. He looked a shadow of himself last year. I, I couldn't believe that was the four times Formula One world champion. And I know Ferrari had a bad car, but he just didn't drive like Seb. I hope this new team, Aston Martin, gives him fresh motivation. It gives him, you know, renewed energy and just gets him back to where he used to be. I can't say for definite whether Aston Martin will have a car that can battle for championships, but just seeing Seb's mojo back, you know, just seeing that flair that he had, he, he had a great sense of humour and that, added to his personality that raring to go racing driver who was hungry for every point he could get i hope that that does come back and the problem is is if it doesn't then maybe it's it i know it's i know it's really i'm just i'm just gonna get hated for this i'm just gonna get hated for this but i'm gonna be honest you know we look at the four times world champion we don't see that on the grid at the moment and whether it's just because of ferrari and, and all the crap that went on and, and that's understandable but if he doesn't do well this year then we have to sort of look at it and go look perez lost his drive for seb to be in that team was it really the right decision? I hope he does come back because I love watching Seb race. I love watching him battle with Lewis and I would like to see them more on an even keel car wise and have the opportunity to battle with each other. That would be really, really good. Our third driver is Esteban Ocon. I love Esteban. He is a very, very good driver and that year out of F1 cost him. He never deserved to sit out a year of f1 and to be fair to him he didn't do that bad a job last year but he was outclassed by ricardo we did expect that because ricardo is a very very good driver but 
Ricardo got 119 points and Ocon got 62. That's quite a big gap. It's not Lewis and Bottas gap, but it's a gap. There's a lot of expectations for Ocon to do well at Alpine and obviously he's now teammates with Fernando Alonso. That's a lot of strain to be teammates with Fernando Alonso. They're obviously going to be loving Fernando because that's sort of how teams tend to be when they have Fernando. I really don't know if he's got time on his side because there's so many young guns coming through and only 20 drives. If he doesn't do as good or nearly as good as Fernando, I think he could see himself without a drive next year. I hope it's just, you know, last year was just getting himself back up to speed, which it probably was. He was very, very quick. And I don't feel that we saw everything that he had to give last year. So hopefully this year it will be a difference and we will see him on the grid for another year. But I do think that he does have to step up the mark a little bit this year. Our fourth driver is Antonio Giovinazzi. Giovinazzi had a very good year last year. He kind of wiped out all of the mistakes that he'd made in his first year in F1. It was a very difficult uh, season for him in his first year. And he also really did step up to the mark with Kimi. He equaled the points, which was really, really good. The problem for Giovinazzi is that there is a young gun coming up the field called Mick Schumacher. Unless Ferrari take Mick, which with Carlos and Charles in there, I don't think they're gonna do that next year. Alfa Romeo will be looking to put Mick in that car. And okay, we can look at Kimi, maybe he'll retire at the end of this year, but you've also got Callum Eilert, you've got Robert Schwartzman, Marcus Armstrong. There's loads of young, new talent. I think if Giovinazzi doesn't step up to the plate this year, he will probably find himself out of a drive. Compared to Kimi, you know, he did have a better year. So hopefully he will just take that a step further and it will be enough to keep him in for 2022. Our last driver is probably the most obvious one, I think. I imagine you all expected him to be there. Nicholas Latifi. Nicholas Latifi is a lovely guy and I all... I always feel really bad saying anything negative about him, but he really needs to pull something out of the bag this year. I know he's up against George Russell, who is a very good driver, one of the best coming up the field, but he has only been in Q2 once last year. He suffered a 16 to nil defeat <laughs> to George Russell in qualifying. There's a half a second gap between them on average on dry sessions. Russell got nine Q2 appearances last year. On race days, he was a lot better and he performed quite well compared to George, but it's not probably enough to secure him a place for 2022. He needs to be either on par or just behind George. And I know a lot of that depends on Williams and their car. And I imagine they will have a slightly better car this year hopefully. But he really does need to pick up the pace. He's obviously a pay driver and he brings a lot to Williams, which is what they need. But when they think about it, based on pace, he's quite slower. And all the new guys coming up, as I mentioned, for the Giovinazzi, you know, Mick Schumacher, I don't think Mick will go, but there are, you know, Callum Eilert, you know, all that, those drivers are coming up the field. When you put that with their potential money that they could bring and their speed, they've got a better all round deal. So it's really important for the TV to do better this year. And hopefully he will, but it could be the last time we see him in F1. So that's it. That's who I think needs to improve this year in order to stay in F1 longer. Tell me what you guys think. Is there anyone that I might have missed off? Is there anyone you don't agree with? Let me know in the comment section below. I really appreciate everyone's comments. It's always good to hear other people's opinion. And don't forget, these are just my opinions. Everyone has them. So do feel free to pop yours down in the comment section. Don't forget, I am live on Twitch Monday, Wednesday and Saturday. Link is in the description below. But for now, please take care of yourself and I will see you.